Ahoy there makers! Do you want to build robots with a Raspberry Pi but don't know which hat to use for the motor drivers, servos and batteries? Then this is the show for you. So let's dive straight in. My name's Kevin. Come with me, we build robots, bring them to life with code and have a whole load of fun along the way. This is the Sunfounder Fusion Hat, a motor driver, servo driver and battery powered add-on for the Raspberry Pi. In this video we'll review the hat and we'll also build a robot. It works with most Raspberry Pis including the 3B+, 4, 5 and 02W models. It has an included rechargeable battery, 4 DC motor drivers, 12 PWM servo drivers, ADC, a speaker and built-in microphone and works with most AI large language models like ChatGPT and Gemini. To understand the pros and cons, I decided the best way was to build a robot with it. This is a QB3, the sibling of the original QB1 robot. You'll find a link to the building instructions, STL files and code in the description below. This robot uses the battery, the speaker, microphone and also a Raspberry Pi camera. You'll also notice it has some mechanum wheels for going sidewards. I want to be able to use this robot without having all the cables attached, just running on battery. I've headed over here to connect.raspberrypi.com. This is some remote access software that you can set up on your Raspberry Pis. It's actually built into all the latest releases. And this means that we can actually connect to our Raspberry Pi without having any cables attached. A bit like VNC, if you know what that is back in the day. So I'm going to sign in with my Raspberry Pi ID. So I'm just going to find the device I've set up here. I think this one is called Kev's Arcade 2. If I now connect to this with remote sharing, you can actually connect to the desktop, just as if we had a remote monitor and keyboard and mouse attached. So when you first set up your Raspberry Pi, you have this little option over here, this uh, icon, and you can sign in and set up the Raspberry Pi Connect. You need to do that before you go to the web browser at connect.raspberrypi.com, and then you can connect to your Raspberry Pi as and when you like. I've gone ahead and installed the drivers for this software. So I'm over here on the Raspberry Pi desktop connected to this through Raspberry Pi Connect. And the first thing I notice, which is really neat, is I can see the battery. So the battery is currently 37% charged. I've been playing around with this a little bit just before recording this. So that's why it's depleted a little bit. You can see there it's charging quite quickly. I've got this charging on the 27 watt power supply from Raspberry Pi. So it's as simple as running this command to install the software and that will install all the drivers, some example pieces of code, which we'll have a look at in a minute and also that nice little battery indicator there. Let's go into the Fusion Hat and let's take a look at some of the examples. So there is a nice motor test there. We'll, we'll try that one out in a second once the batteries are charged up a little bit more. We can also look at the servo ones. I'll go and get a little robot arm connected up so that we can test out the servo connections. So I wired up the robot arm created that in another video link in the description and we're going to run the servo test so python servo test we're going to run that one out and see what happens hopefully fingers crossed this will actually do something here we go it's definitely did something let's try the uh, servo sweep one so here we go it's very slowly moving all the servos you can see from this little rubber arm that i built uh, that that's working quite nicely. The worst thing about maybe attaching this to the top of the robot, I think I probably need to have some extension cables for the servo wires because they're a little bit tight at the moment on this particular model. You can see that it's working quite nicely. Now one of the really nice features is there is this zero servo button. That zero button there, if I press that twice, then it will reset all the servos that are connected to their zero state. So if I press it twice, you can see there, servo and went back to its reset position. That's really neat if you want to calibrate your servos quite quickly. So next we're going to run the motor test. Now to be fair on this one you can see there we have forwards backwards stop forwards backwards stop and it actually span around and that's because the the direction of the motors isn't aligned with the code so we need to go in there and tweak that but i intend to create an entire separate library based on this hat code anyway we can see that this does work quite nicely next up we're going to try some sound so the sound in and sound out let's have a look what we have available so let's do python and text to speech e-speak let's try this one i'll put the microphone nearer the speaker so we can actually hear it i'm e-speak tts 
it said, I mean speak TTS. Let's see what else there is. This is speech to text. Let's try the Vosk stream. So I'll try that first time. Bit of an error there. I'm just going to try that with sudo. It just needs to download the Vosk model. Hello, tell me a joke. It seems to be working pretty good. Hey robot, do something. Cool. So my next plans for this is to write some custom code where we can say a command and the robot will then react to it. So I can say go forward, turn around, that kind of thing, and it will do that and maybe get a little voice prompt back. That's what's coming up next. So I've written this little program. This is a QB3 class and you can see there we first of all import the fusion hat, the motor, the Vosk, which is going to be our uh, speech to text which is what the STT means. And we also have TTS, which is text to speech, which we're using eSpeak for that. So here's my QB class. You can see here we have an initialization thing that's gonna set up the four motors, connect them up. We're gonna set up the speech to text and we're gonna have the US English. We're also gonna set up the text to speech using eSpeak. We then set up some amplitude, speed, gap, and pitch for that. That just gives the, the voice a specific timbre. And then we set up a couple of different functions using this async. This means we can issue the command and we're not waiting around for that to complete. Uh, so that's part of the async IO library. We set the power to be whatever the speed has been set up here. So it defaults to 0.5. It, these motors are quite powerful uh, and on this particular robot it will wobble around quite a lot if we give it full power. So this power equals speed times 100 is just a way of uh, ramping up and ramping down the power that's needed. We then set that for the forward. All the motors are going to be pointing in the same direction so the power is going to be the same for all motors. Backwards we basically reverse the speed so it's a negative power. For stopping it we want to stop all motors strafe left and right. Because we have mechanism wheels we can actually turn them in a particular sequence and it'll make the robot move left and right without having to turn around. So we have strafe left, strafe right. And then we have rotate right, rotate left, um, which just turns two of the motors in one direction and two of the motors in another direction. So it's kind of like a tank in how the uh, motors will work on each side of the robot. We then got a spin in place and that will just rotate right for a duration that we've provided there. The next piece is a clever piece. This will listen for commands. So we can say goodbye equals false. That's just listening for a goodbye command. So while true and not goodbye, print say something and it will then listen for a command so for a result in self speech to text dot listen stream equals true if the result is done that's what we get back from the speech to text library and we can print out what the result is we can then set the command to be whatever the result is in the final we'll make that lowercase just make it easier to work with otherwise if there is a partial we can also do the same thing there where the command is equal to the partial that's kind of a fragment of the speech we've also got this break this means that it won't continue any further if there is any partial speeches. So the next piece of code will then check to see is the command in any of these valid commands. So forwards, backwards, strafe left, strafe right, uh, rotate left, rotate right, stop. And let's add into that goodbye. And also another variant of that goodbye with no spaces in it. And then it's going to print out executing that command. So the next block of commands essentially defines what the motors need to do for each of these different commands. So for command forward, we say self dot forward. We've got that command further up for doing self forward which is that one just there so that will actually tell the motors what to do and then it will sleep for half a second at 20 percent power and then it will stop after that sleep so it's not just going to keep going forwards because you'll be yelling after your robot stop stop otherwise we've got the same for each of the commands so backwards strafe left strafe right rotate left rotate right and stop and then finally we've got the goodbye command as well and at the very end of this if none of those commands have been spoken it will basically just sleep for two seconds let's actually change that to 0.5 and then it will break out of that uh, that loop we then got a say command so we can actually get it to say things that's using the text to speech so self dot text to speech dot say and that's using the uh, eSpeak library and then finally we've got this start which is just running the sync io loop what i've done over here is i've saved the code into a git repository and I'm just going to make uh, some changes here, commit that up. So I added the goodbye command, let's save all those changes. Let's sync the changes to GitHub. If I now come back over to the robot itself, I can do git pull and that git pull command will pull any new changes that have been uh, made to that repository and that they are now ready to go. So let's try um, python3 demo not two dot pi and let's run this and see what happens. Starting movement demo. Forward. Backward, strafe left, rotate left, goodbye.
So that was a fun project. We made a robot that we can speak to. We can tell it commands. It can listen to those commands. It can even talk back to us all using the Sunfounder Fusion hat. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I shall see you next time. Bye for now.